Hey guys, Anthony, 4B4 Diesel. We're under the back of our 2013 Hilux. If you've been watching on 4B4 Adventures, our other YouTube channel, F-O-U-R-B-Y number four, Adventures, just like 4B4 Diesel, except Adventures. A lot of good information on there. Um, some of the stuff that's not on here, obviously, is over there if it's more relevant to that channel. But if you've been watching, we've been on the tracks a bit and uh, busting this and that and whatever. We What we do, we go out and we break things and then we come up with solutions. So we work out why did this happen? We probably already knew, but we had to prove the point by doing it. And then we say, okay, so how do we have a solution for that? And then we change things. And it could be a bit on each channel. So you might wanna just subscribe and turn on the bell, the bell on, on both of those. Now, first thing you might notice here, we're doing a bit of R&D because these are uh, Dobinson's monotubes. See how they're uh, technically they're upside down, right? Well, they're meant to be upside down, but this is right way up. And the reason we're doing that is I wanna prove a point and that is if they're on the back of a Hilux how long before they get let me get around and show you so this is off topic now but how long before this side of it gets hit by a rock that mono tube here and it's damaged so that's what that's about you might notice a few things like that you might notice look it's really clean isn't it look how clean it is it's not coated in mud I mean I look old and rusty because it's done some work always check these make sure they're not blocked right but look how clean it is look at this Anyway, what we're doing is we're pulling the diff Long center. story short, because I know you like short stories. This is what we're doing, right? It's got open diffs at the moment. It's got traction control. I'm, uh, I've got a new name for Hilux traction control. It's called Craption Control, because it's crap traction control, right? So it's now called Craption. You can put that in the comments if you like that one. I like it, Craption Control, because, you know, compared to the Pradas, the 150 had got awesome traction control, and you don't need any lockers or anything. The vehicles, with a slight delay, they'll pretty well go anywhere. Not much of a delay. The Hilux, it's really delayed. It might get the job done. You might break something. You might roll the car or something while you're trying to do something. So what we're going to do, I didn't want to put a locker in because everybody's heard about, you know, the unreliability issues with a lot of lockers. So I'm not saying I'm not going to put a locker in. I'll probably put a locker in the front of the Hilux, but step by step, I want to give you some info. So this is what we've done. I've got part number, it's upside down for you, but you can read it. TT70P25888. Anyway, yours might be different, but what this is, this is your, uh, we should look in the book actually, to tell you, because there's different options, right? You could have a, this is a, this is what they call a no spin. Some people call it, you know, like the locker, L-O-K-K-A. That'd be a locker, but it's not really a locker because it's always locked. It should be called an auto unlocker. But what we've got is the um, Detroit True Track anyway, right? So basically it's the worm drive, whatever, you know, basically you can look up Google how that works. I'm not going to go through that in this video. I just want to say this is what we're putting in the back of the Hilux with a bit of brakes or with a bit of traction control or with a bit of handbrake. It should do the job we want and give us a bit of better traction on road as well. And for those people that like a bit of fun, maybe a little bit of fun in the two wheel drive. Okay. You know what I mean? Just you know, be careful of the fun there. Too much fun factor. But this is the part number for the locker. It's not a locker, sorry. It's the, you know, like I said, Detroit True Track. Um, we'll call it the, the really good proper LSD. It comes just with it. That's it. That's all it comes in, right? It doesn't come with anything else. So we're going to reuse the pinion. We're going to do it the quick, easy way. When you get most lockers installed at most places, this is what they do. They don't generally change bearings. They generally pull them off, put them back on. They don't touch the pinion. They'll do the minimum. So that's what we're going to do. This is going to be the quick easy easy way to do it i'm not saying it's quick and easy it takes hours and you've got to pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars for people to do it okay but what i'm doing i'm putting new bearings on the um all right one here one there so you probably want to know which one now some of the bearings are 25 millimeter inside diameter some are 30 these are the 30 mil the later the later models take the 30 mil i'll show you the part number we'll get to it in a minute all right there it is in case you want to know, these are the 30 mil inside diameter. Coyo bearings is all I'm going to use. So we've got two Coyo bearings to go on there and there. We're literally going to get the diff center out. We've got the genuine gasket here. You know, you can use RTV if you want, but for the sake of 20 bucks, whatever, that is the genuine Toyota made in Thailand diff gasket. Now I've got other ones there, I think for the 120. They're probably made in Japan, different part number, but we believe they're the same. So if your dealer hasn't got a Prado one, they've got a Hilux or I haven't got it. I believe it's the same. We haven't done it yet um, and we're not going to, but we've got one of each in stock for just in case whenever we need it. Um, after we use this one, we've got one of each in stock still because this one's specifically for this job. So what we're going to do, we're going to get that diff center out to do you that. You can see Johnny's all over it, right? You can see things already coming on. He's got that. Look, sometimes you don't even have to do all these things, but we just like to take a few extra bolts out. So the ABS sensor, that'll come out. I'm not, I'm not here to take the sensor out, but you know what? 
just about. It's a bit tight. I'm not going to do it one-handed, whatever. You want to do that one, do you? Okay, let's see. A little bit of brake fluid. We've got some uh, brake line clamps here on the rubber hoses. Give the wiggle nice and tight. Yeah, it's a little one. It doesn't want to come out, does it? It's a bit scary now. Yeah, I didn't want to do it one-handed either. So the video isn't about how to get an ABS sensor out, but, you know, it's a bit of a wiggle and a pull, and eventually it'll come out. It's just stuck. The O-ring will be sort of, you know, on a groove there. That's where, well, there's an O-ring there. Mate, unbelievable. And anyway, I'll leave you with that. Good luck. I'll be over here trying to get this one out. And, uh, yeah, don't break anything. No, I'm not really trying to get it out. I, don't, I actually want to put the camera down to do that. So, so but we're going to get those out. We're going to undo these bolts here. There you go, like that. That's what it looks like when it comes out. It's got a bit of oil on it, has it? Yeah, is there meant to be oil there? Yes, of course there is, right? That's where there's oil. Oh, is there meant to be oil that side? I don't know if there is or not, actually. I have to think about that. Maybe not, actually. I don't think it's meant to be all that far. Where's the seal? The seal's uh, the seal's over that side, isn't it? Anyway, I can't think at the moment, so we'll pull it apart and we'll have more info. So don't go anywhere, see? Don't go anywhere. It could get exciting. Um, these are going to come out. Those bolts are going to come out. We're going to pop the axles back just to, enough to get... We're going to get this uh, drive shaft unbolted. I'm going to mark it. We're going to mark this before we take it off so that we put it back in the exact same position. If it hasn't already got a mark, that looks like a mark to me. So the yellow and the yellow, so factory or it's been off before. Undo these bolts here and the whole center. We're gonna lift it out and then we're gonna to get to work. Right, next thing you gotta to do to pop the axle out is just disconnect that handbrake cable from in Undo here. the bolts and pop it out the back of the backing plate there so it's not in the way of what we're doing. Yep, and you're gonna to need to drain the diff oil out. Mate, we can see you in the oil mirror. <laughs> Next, we're going to remove this propeller shaft. Oh, propeller. Propeller shaft. What's this blue paint on there? What's going on there? Must be blue underneath. That's all the uh, stone chips I've thrown in it, maybe. There you go. Anyway. Oh, yeah, there's a mark. Oh, you marked it as well. <laughs> You're ready. Anyway, undo those four bolts. Take note of which way they are and put them back the way they were is ideal. So the idea of this is, right, so it's a, it's, it's a, like a really good LSD, let's say. So if the traction control is there at all, as soon as it puts the brakes on the spinning wheel, then the power goes, as soon as it starts applying resistance by any sort of brakes, then this should not lock up, but, you know, should pick up the other wheel again. So we're just going to see how it works. We're going to show you on 4B4 Adventures, let you know, ah, oh, that was a waste of time, don't do that, or no, actually, it works really good. And I've had good reports from... A small amount of people so good really good reports from a very small amount of people not many people do this they just go and put lockers in so you're spending more money there's more installation cost and there's less reliability in my opinion from the small amount that are out there never heard of any problems okay and obviously they're built for they're built tough you can do your research i'm not trying to sell you one it doesn't bother me whether you buy one or not um you know if you want one installed we might know someone that can do that if you want one we might know someone you can get one off but just stay tuned, subscribe, turn the bell on so we can let you know if it's a waste of time or not. And then we'll go ahead and put a front locker in and it'll just absolutely transform the vehicle. I can guarantee you that because that's what we did in the 120 Prado and that's what it's done with about 10 years of experience. I've had eight years experience driving that. It just completely transforms it when you flick that switch on the front locker. So if it didn't work with the traction control, what I would do is apply the brakes and then power through the brakes. So drive through the brakes, which is... A, a full driving technique you do in some other situations as well but with this sort of diff brakes on drive through it it should work really well and then you've of course got the handbrake you can just if you don't want to drive through the brakes having the brakes on at the front as well you can just pull the handbrake on and the resistance of the shoes you might think oh it's going to wear out your brakes it's, it's only to get past one short uh, harder section and then you can release the handbrake once you get moving again yeah so uh, a few things you can do and look at that, like magic, the propeller shaft has disappeared. Now all we need to do is get on the beers and magically have these axles disappear. And boom, shazam, it's gone, bloody beautiful. Let's have a look in here. Okay, what I wanna show you is, this is messy, right? See this, this is real messy. That ain't meant to look like that, right? That is not meant to look like that. It's actually quite yucky. Now, what's going on there? Well. Has there been some water in there? Has it sucked some water in at some point? 
But you want to just give that a bit of a wipe so we can see what it should look like. And we'll get we'll have a look at the other side as well. But look, this is what we're going to do, right? The way to do if you want to if you're at high K's and you want to put do some diff work, then you probably should do your pinion bearings and seal and just do the whole job and do your axle bearings as well, right? Our Sunshine Workshop partner, they love doing the whole job properly. But this is the cut corners job. You want the cheap job, poor man pays twice, you do this and then later you gotta do more work anyway later. Let's see what happens. What I wanna do on this Hilux is see how long these real, rear wheel bearings will actually last. That's why I don't wanna change them. But what I might do, because we keep them in stock, is this seal, the seal that's in there you can see. I might change that because it seems obvious to me that oil is getting past the seal because there shouldn't be oil on the ABS sensor because it shouldn't come past that seal. All the oil should be that side of the seal. This side is the bearing and the grease. And once you get oil to the bearing, it gets in the bearing, can damage the bearing. So I'm sort of going, is this oil washed grease out of the bearing? How long has it been like that for? So I've got to say, there's going to be another job in this vehicle sooner or later. It could be in six months, 12 months, 18 months, two years, three years. Who knows when, but subscribe, turn the bell on, and we'll show you more detail about changing the axle bearings. It's not happening on this visit. We're going to clean that up. We know that's leaking, so I'll see how many I've got in stock, but I'll, I'll waste a seal. When I say waste it, because if I change that seal now, when I change the bearing, I'm going to change it again. But what that'll do by changing that seal now, or any time you've got your axles out to do something, say you're only at 150K, 100K, 180K, then if you were putting a locker in or whatever, then you should change these seals, right? Because these bearings, they actually last really, really well. But one of the things, reasons they fail is when the seal leaks, the oil gets to the bearing and the bearing will last tens of thousands of kilometers past the had oil in it. We don't know how bad this is, but that looks, that's why it's thick. It looks like grease to me. Wouldn't you agree that the oil's come out to the bearing and it's kind of washed the grease out of the bearing? Yeah. Um, so that's what we think. Maybe a little bit of water as well, because it's a little bit gray, but not too bad, hard to see. So anyway, let's uh, clean it up and let's have a look at the other side. Okay, so we're over the uh, passenger side now. Definitely some oil there, but it hasn't washed all the grease out of the bearing yet. So whoever's subscribed, all the regulars and all that sort of thing, and the people that are still with us now that are really prioritise educating themselves because they've realised that yes, you can't get people to do things right. They're just not around and there's becoming less and less of them. And guess what? There's only one of me, so don't rely on me to do it. I'm here to teach you so you can do it or you and your mate or you and your family member get on it together to give each other a bit of confidence. So this one here, there's a good chance that this bearing will last longer. Now I'm going to give you the rundown. These bearings, they didn't have any play in them. That's why we're not changing them. They weren't noisy, I don't believe. Unless it is noisy. Maybe that was that. No, it was on and off. It wasn't the bearing yet. Because there is a noise, but it's not the bearing, right? But then I'm just thinking out loud. So what you do now is you change this seal. And then mark my words, the passenger one, let's see how long it lasts. The driver one, because it's had that amount of oil on the other side into the bearing and it's washed the grease out, I'm going to say it's going to get noisy in about 10, 20 to 30. Let's say either side of 20,000 Ks. I reckon it's going to get noisy, and when it gets noisy, I'm not going to change one, I'm going to change both sides. Well then again, I might not, I might change that one just to see how long this one lasts. Because the reason I attack it this way, the Hilux, it's never really going to go more than a few hundred k's from home, is, is the plan. Who knows, plans change, so it's going to go out and do some hard tracks, but it's not touring Australia. Now if I was touring Australia, mate, I'd be changing every bearing in this diff and these axles and be done, full maintenance done. You know, it's called the 10 year maintenance because it's nearly... 10 years old this vehicle so you spend a little bit of money might seem like a lot of thousand two thousand three thousand but it's a lot less than uh hundred thousand on a new vehicle setup right and what are you going to get for the old car yeah you know what i mean so you're talking about a 50 60 70 thousand dollar upgrade so worth spending the money don't invest in new diesels in my opinion i've said that just stick with what you've got last of the best awesome and especially looking at price of petrol i mean in australia uh, unleaded petrol is 60 cents a litre cheaper than diesel, and that's pretty consistent now. So there's a massive saving to be had by unleaded. So we're waiting for petrol hybrids, we are. That's what we're waiting for, for touring and travelling on Pradas and stuff like that. Anyway, we're going to clean this up and get on with it and get that diff oh, yeah, set looking good. So see, nuts, nuts and bolts. So we've got one, the top nut and bolts loose, but it's sitting there. Not like it's going to fall out or anything, because it'll be a little bit stuck from that paper gasket that will be getting replaced. With the genuine one you know but like i said you can use rtv but i'll just go use genuine parts just goes on clean and dry is that the last one yep. 
Beautiful, I'll give you a hand, we'll lift it out. All right, so there you are, it's out. You can see how the paper gasket breaks there. That's why you need to replace it, because it's genuine to it. It'd be relatively easy to uh, clean off. You can see I'm trying to pull it off now just to demonstrate. You know, get a razor blade, clean that off, it come up nice and clean. Anyway, what we're gonna do in here, basically we're replacing this uh, whole section in the middle here. We're just gonna reuse the uh, crown wheel. That's this one here. Some people call it a ring gear, but to me, that's just confusing. That's what's on a drive plate. This is a crown wheel, okay? We'll go through a bit more of the components in another video. This was mainly getting it out. Um, I know you what, you're busy, you're busy, I'm busy too, guess what? So if I've got time to make another video, I'll show you what we do replacing the, putting the true track in here. And if I don't, then I won't do that. But then we might have another video putting this all back together because you people love it and you want to get yourself educated. So I'll do what I can to help you. Can you do what you can to help me by pressing like, subscribe and turn the bell on and we'll catch you on the next video, guys. There you go. Butter beer. This is a Flintstones mobile. The bloody diff's missing now. Now let's have a look around here. A bit more bonus info for anyone that wants to know. See those metal plates on the side there? I think these ones might be spot welded into position. You just got to be careful when you're putting the axle in. See if it's low or high. You can hit the end of the axle on those edges there and probably bust or knock those out of place. So just be careful of that. They might be just, I'm not sure if they're spot welded or, you know, they're just sort of pressure in position, to be honest. But um, you need, when you lift the axle in, you can't just slide it in along the base in there because it hits it. You actually need to lift it up and poke it through that hole there before it goes into the diff. So. Anyway, we'll cover that in the put it back together video. Catch you then. See ya.